Why? Hello and welcome everybody. Also, good morning. Haven't seen you guys in a few months. So today we are back bringing the channel back to life and we are starting, of course, with some PoE2 content. So at the moment, since there's so much to cover with the PoE2 reveal, it was literally hours long of just reveals. Uh, we're going to go ahead and try to isolate and focus on the ascendancies, since to me that is a core part of the character customization, right? So this is currently what we have access to come December 6th. Now, I may butcher some of these because I don't have the exact names of them. But if we think of like going back to PoE, right, this would be the Marauder, the Duelist. Uh, let's see, we have the, technically the Sork and the Witch are in the exact same spot. So that's, you know, just the same area. This would be like the Monk slash Shadow and then the Ranger slash, I don't remember who this is. We're getting two Ascendancies right now. Each one will have a final three. Um, but also, when the other base comes out, it will have even more, right? So a prime example would be, right now this is Duelist, right? Or not Duelist, but the other guy. Once we get the other dude, we get three more Ascendancies. So basically, you're going to get six Ascendancies per starting area, right? Prime example would be how this one here is the Sorceress, and this is the Witch. They both start at the same part on the Passive Tree, but each have three different Ascendancies. Okay, so with that being said... We're going to go ahead and play this and start talking about this because this is i mean there's so many cool aspects but we got to start somewhere right drastically affect how you build your character as a sorceress you could become a storm weaver a master of the elements one of the things i really like here is if you look at how nice this looks so one of the cool things that's coming in poe 2 i think it's cool is you can only have one support gem on all of your skills of that type so example in poe when you play a projectile build, so you play a caster build, right? And you're not crit based. That means you're probably going to use the controlled destruction support gem that gives you more spell damage, but less crit and attach that to a wide variety of things, right? In this one, you have to choose where it goes. So that kind of really creates the more single target and uh, AOE versions or utility versus single target, etc. So here you can see like a lot was sent into the fireball because you can see it shoots out with multiple projectiles and then it has kind of like a Nova effect. Tempest Caller causes elemental storms to be summoned each time you do a critical hit. With anyway, the, this right here, you can see Ascendancies, I feel, are going to have more of an impact in PoE 2 because we're literally getting, like, as you can see here, I'll just mute, it's easier to play it through. Every time they hit, they're literally creating these, like, circles on the floor whenever they crit, right? These right here. And then they also get two copies of Shock, which is, like, pretty big. That's a pretty all-out damage Ascendancy. But then the cool thing is there's so many more things that they haven't even shown within all of the ascendancy, so we don't even know all of them yet. There's so much hidden, it's gonna be cool. Definitely closer like the Elementalist. Chronomancer and command time itself. She literally has the ability to stop time with time freeze. This is just thematically a really cool skill. I've always enjoyed classes that can like, like slow, well not really slow, that doesn't sound cool, but like if you play like Final Fantasy, right? Uh, I think, is it is it Red Mage? Or is it, uh, I forgot which one it is. It kind of has like slow plus haste, but it's just a really cool theme. I like it. I do also want to bring one more thing. I know I'm pausing a bunch. There's just so much info in this damn game. Uh, whenever an Ascendancy is granting you a skill like this, I believe you can actually put support gems on it, which is cool. Teleport back to a previous location, resetting her life and mana back to what it was. Or with time snap, she can reset all her cooldowns and cast all her spells again. Yeah, that's pretty strong. On the warrior, you can choose between the Warbringer or the Titan. The Warbringer channels the might of his ancestors to gain tremendous power. Using Answered Call, you can summon ancestral spirits linked to each of your totems. I don't know if I care too much. The funny thing is, like, we just got out of totem meta in PoE, and now we're getting it back in PoE too. But the game is a very different pace, so I can understand it. And a protective layer that absorbs all damage until it breaks. And here you go. This is for people who want to skip Maven memory game in PoE too. You just Jade Heritage it. Warcaller's bellow allows you to explode the corpses of your enemies. I like this. Wolf's howl, you can ignore the cooldowns of your war cries. Let all that anger out. The Titan class is all about hitting big. With Earthbreaker, every slam is a chance to create an aftershock. With crushing impacts, every hit becomes a crushing blow, which will allow you to stun your enemies with ease. Yeah, that's cool. With surprising strength, you can take advantage of stunned enemies to deal 40% more damage. That's cool. This is literally like what I played in Elden Ring. As a ranger, big bonk. You choose to be a dead eye, 
an expert markswoman who can take down foes with style. I have to say, I think that these animations are very clean. Like when I watch the gameplay here, as a ranger, you might choose to. You can see. I know people will say like, "Well, look how stupid it looks while she's running and shooting." And it's like, "Well, yeah, but you literally can't run and shoot right now, so you have to have some form of penalty on movement while shooting." And then they turn around to shoot the disengage skill. That's pretty cool. down foes with style. With endless munitions, every attack ends an extra projectile. This one's kind of whatever. It's a lot more closer to like the POE one ascendancy, but that's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. A small increase to movement speed with every attack, but be careful. She loses them when getting hit. With eagle eyes, she will never miss, allowing you to stop wasting all those passive points on accuracy. Alternatively, you could become a pathfinder, the master of flasks and poison. She can choose from one of several throwable concoctions, allowing her to spend her flask charges to throw explosive bottles that deal various types of damage. This one I have, I'm curious how it's going to be balanced because we only have two flasks. We only have a life flask now and a mono flask. I'm very curious what happens here. A fulminating one can shock your enemies, allowing you to do extra damage. Contagious contamination allows her to spread poisons between her foes, while overwhelming toxicity doubles the number of stacks they can be infected by. Poison builds. Running assault allows her to move much more quickly while firing. That's kind of cool, actually. Pursuit makes her totally immune to being slowed by enemies. The witch can ascend into the infer Okay, we need to talk about this now. They did not tease anything about righteous fire. But if there is a righteous fire in the game and it's tied to an ascendancy, it would probably be this class. The thing is, this is also the base class for witch, and witch seems to be oriented around minions. However, this is Path of Exile, which means you don't have to be a minion witch build. Really, it comes down to the ascendancy. But if we look at this, right, I think maybe this path here is the minion path. There's a lot of different paths. Like, I don't even know if they show whatever the hell this is over here. These actually look like they're just placeholders still, maybe, based off the icon, but I could totally be wrong. Or the Blood Mage. As an Infernalist, she can summon a loyal Hellhound companion. The Hellhound sets enemies on fire as well as taking a percentage of the damage of the infernalist gets oh yeah you can see that right there with pyromantic pact you can turn your mana into infernal flame as you cast more spells the flame builds up and if it overflows you'll take damage using bringer of flame you'll want to make sure you keep the flames topped up while your infernal flame is above 30 percent all damage from you and your minions will ignite enemies that's good she can also transform into a literal Okay, demon. that's demon form this way. I While see. In demon form, she takes an increasing amount of damage, but her cast speed and damage increase rapidly as well. So if you're planning on transforming into a demon, make sure you stack a lot of life recovery. She can also become a blood mage. A this is another themed thing that I really enjoy is uh is like blood theme stuff. Master of life and energy. All blood mages must pay the price of making skills cost life as well as mana. But in exchange, every monster they kill will drop life remnants, which allow them to quickly gain back that life. I don't know if I care too much for that. Crimson power, she can gain large amounts of extra life, and with vitality siphon. This one, this one here is exactly like a unique we have in Poe. I think from Uber Cortex. You can't read it, but it says gain energy shield from equipped body armor as extra maximum life. So really, really pumping into your body she armor can gain here. Large amounts of extra life, and with vitality siphon, she can use her spells to leech life back as well. This is actually a character I wanted to play as a more generic caster archetype, basically stacking life and then gaining crit chance or sorry, crit multi for it, and then inserting any skill of your choosing. I think something like this is pretty nice to start with in PoE 2 because you can pretty much say, all right, I'm going to try every spell in the game and see what suits me best. Once you've got a or something similar life, at least, right? You can use Gore Spike to make your critical hit steal incredible amounts of damage. A monk who is in tune with the elements might become an invoker. Monk's also really cool. Elemental expression, the invoker will create waves of elemental power each time he does a critical strike. With faith as a choice, you gain the ability to meditate, allowing you to double your energy shield. Seems a little tricky. I wonder how you can get this off in boss fights. Choose between I am the blizzard or I am the thunder to specialize in cold or lightning. And I shall rage will allow you to turn into an unbound avatar. Each time you apply a status ailment to an enemy, you gain unbound fury. I like the way Monk runs. His animations are so clean. To deal way more damage and inflict even more elemental ailments. Some monks choose to reach into the. This looks really sick. The acolyte of Chayula can exchange their mastery of spirit for darkness, a resource that can be utilized to both absorb and deal damage. The shroud of darkness will protect you from all damage incoming, 
but if you take Grasp of the Void, you will deal extra chaos damage from all the darkness you have. Their Dark Pact offers greatly increased resistances to chaos damage and can allow their mana leech to not only happen instantly, but apply to their energy shield as well. Another node you can take is Waking Dream, which allows you to see into the domain of the Breach Demons. There you will see the Flames of Chiyula that can be taken to gain life, mana, and damage. The Mercenary has a job to do, but which job suits you? You might choose to become a Witch Hunter. Mercenary is another sick class. Excessive Rituals will give you a Sorcery Ward, allowing you to defend yourself against elemental hits in exchange for less defense against attacks. With Zealous Inquisition, your enemies have a 10% chance to explode on death. I'm jealous. I love explode. I want explode so bad. The chance is doubled against demons and undead. Actually looks sick. I'm pretty sure that... I wonder if that's the explode right there. 10% chance to explode on death. The chance is doubled. Against that right there that looks so clean if Demons that's it undead. it would make sense too it's like white because it's, it's good against holy right or not Your holy undead against enemies can deal up to 30 percent of their life and damage that's that looks good. broken this is great for hunting powerful bosses and with witch bane you can break your enemy's concentration preventing them from casting spells as often as they would usually do enemies have maximum concentration equal to 40 percent of their max life break enemies concentration on a hit equal to 100 percent of damage dealt. enemies regain concentration every second of the hand lost you could also choose to become a channeling legionnaire enhancing your abilities by embedding gems directly in your flesh this is another very cool Integrated class Integrated efficiency will give you extra skill slots Th this basically could work for anything it all that matters is where you are on the tree right Metallurgical infusion gives you extra maximum resistances as you socket more and more support gems Adaptive capability allows you to use any color of gem without worrying about attributes, while crystalline potential adds extra quality bonuses to every gem socketed into your character. So those are the ascendancy classes for the start of early access. The grenade looks so good. Is how you ascend in the first place. Okay, well, that pretty much is just going to cover this, pretty much covering the ascendancies. I mean, if I had to go back and look at them, shit, man, I don't know. They're, they're so, they're all so good. Like, let's see. I I want to play some type of melee, whether it's the like the the Ungabunga Slammer or a more shield archetype. I'm just really curious on how melee feels overall. Um, I, I definitely could see myself playing the Gemling Boy because you can play pretty much anything with that. Uh, Chrono Chrono looks like a really cool archetype as well. Both of these, the Infernalist and the Blood Mage, both look very unique and interesting. So definitely there. I want to try the Shadow Monk. I actually don't care too much for the Rangers, but overall, still very excited. And this is not even half of the amount of classes that are coming to us in, in PoE2's full release. So anyway, we're going to dive right on in back onto the live stream and kind of go into a deep dive um, going back through the VODs again on the, on the stream. So I'm going to catch you guys all later. Hope you guys had a wonderful time. Hope you guys enjoyed yourselves. Let me know what you think your favorite Ascendancy is or what you think you're going to start with. I think I'm going to start with Infernalist just to make sure there's nothing hidden within the Ascendancy there that, you know, maybe RF-like, but we'll see what happens. Anyway, catch you guys all later. Hope you guys enjoyed. Don't forget you can catch me streaming live every day at twitch.tv slash Sundays. See you guys all tomorrow.